Charles, let's start with your relationship with um, Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesige, the retired. Um, when did it start? And, and uh, in terms of you talking to him, particularly for media related work? Um, I, I really didn't know Vesige. Um, I, I mean, I knew of him. Um, because, uh, and I think a lot of people, uh, you know, forget this. When Besige came, he was the political commissar. I think he was the first political commissar in the first years of the NRM. And uh, it was stunning. It was startling seeing someone like that. He was, uh, he was incredibly articulate about the movement idea in ways in which Museveni wasn't. And, and, um, and so we're saying, who the hell is this doctor guy? So I, I, I didn't really, I didn't meet Vesige until, uh, uh, you know, he became Winnie's partner because Winnie is a long-term friend of mine from Ali University and all that kind of thing. So, so that's when I first uh, met him. Around, uh, uh, just after, uh, around uh, around 1998, actually, about there, 1998, 1999, yeah. And in, in terms of, of, you say he's very articulate, he was articulate about the NRA idea then. And he authored this document in 99, where he's parting ways with the NRA. And that document came to the Daily Monitor, and particularly to you as an editor then. How, why was it a news story then? What kind of context did the editors give it then? Um, it was uh, it was big because you know in many ways it's it's uh, there were certain things which are a taboo which were unheard of. Right? Um, I, I mean we knew there were tendencies in the movement, but they were more like the hardliners, the centuries, the moderates. Eh? But just in terms of a night an ideological fraction, an ideological break. It was unheard of. And, uh, and at that point, uh, you know, uh, Museveni almost still had a godlike status. You know, you know in Uganda, he, he was still cashing in a lot on the, on the post-liberation uh, dividend. And, uh, and uh, he was, uh, they had steamrolled all other points of view. So the idea that he could be challenged uh, kind of, uh, you know, internally, it's almost as if, um, you know, it was a scene of uh, Jesus Christ falling out with God. So, I, I mean, it was that dramatic. So, but, but, but uh, that was his document when which was saying that basically the broad move, uh, the movement idea had gone off course and uh, it had uh, run, you know, it had run as far as it could and, uh, and it needed to be opened up. So it was so big because at that point, I mean, you know, it's, if you look at it today, it's ridiculous. There were even delegations from Rukunjiri eh? because it was a fracture that was that deep that uh, that societies or the elder council or whatever they call it from Rukunjiri felt like they needed to come and talk to their son and to intervene and make peace between him and Museveni. So it was it it, it was the big story. So it nothing like that had happened between 1986 and 1999. Nothing inside the movement. Nothing. And, and in terms of, you were running a newspaper then, which is an independent newspaper. And you say Museveni had a godlike status. Um, in terms of the newspaper itself being able to hold the weight of such a story and the intimidation that would follow it and the branding that would follow running such a story, how did the editors arrive at the decision then that this, this is a story we must carry? Well, um, you know, the letter itself, huh? of uh, you know wasn't a, a big issue because um in uganda then as of today it is ideological stories stories about ideological differences were not 
we're fairly low risk. Um, you know, so we did that. I think, I think the big story then came in 2000 when he announced his candidacy. That one was, was, was the one that was a test. Because remember that the NRM ideologically, the very reason of the movement and no movement idea was that, look, you don't need to have organized political parties outside because all these points of view can be articulated. Eh? And, uh, and, uh, and that basically provided a platform for quite a lot of uh, intellectual contestation, let me say. So that was fairly a safe activity then. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't high risk. So in, in 2001, the initial challenge of, of, of Bessige, and immediately after the challenge, he runs out of the country and goes to South Africa. But the, all through the annals of history, there's this Monitor FM and Monitor newspaper, which are giving him uh, space to articulate his ideas, which other media houses weren't doing then. Um, did you see yourselves as editors then, as people who are expanding the democracy of Uganda, or people offering people with alternative views the platform to express themselves? And, and why, did, why did you choose that path? Well, it, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the monitor itself was never um, monolithic, um, you know, internal amongst, you know, uh, you know, the directors and the founders. There were different points of view. And, uh, and uh, basically was, uh, you know, the basic challenge was not necessarily universally popular. I mean, you know, we had to, you know, to agree, you know, amongst ourselves. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's uh, to show you how tricky it was, because um, I get a call to go and meet Vesige and Winnie at Khan Kazana. They said there is something important they needed to show me. I didn't realize that uh, Conrad Nkutu at New Vision had also got the same call. So we get there and, you know, Khan Kazana is, is you know, it's, I don't know whether it's still there, that, but, but, you know, it was a really nice restaurant those days. And um, so we are sitting and we order and after some time. So, you know, it's, it's not clear what's going on. And then uh, basically reaches down, uh, you know, beside him there was a file on the ground. And then he gets out this file and he gets out... Uh, he gives me a statement and Conrad a statement and says read. And we read there and he's declaring his, uh, I mean, you know, uh, Raymond, you could have had a pin drop. There was silence. Because even for me coming from the monitor point of view and, you know, we had been arguing for opening up, we had uh, had more than our fair share of running with, uh, with the government. Eh? I couldn't process it. Eh? I mean, you know, we we're kind of frozen because it's a different thing to argue for opening, but to take on, to announce that you're a movement person and you're going to take on Museveni, even for someone like Bessige, it was, it was something big. And to show you how dramatic it was, when, um, after some time when we composed ourselves and, you know, we had a chat with him, we asked follow-up questions, and it was clear, you know, that this was, it was a Saturday. And, you know, you know, the Sunday paper comes out early. So, I mean, it was very clever of them to time it that way. And, and it is clear why they did it then, because I think if it is something that had been done like at 10 for the next day's paper, I don't know whether that story would have run. Uh, you know, certainly I think it would have run in, uh, you know, in the monitor. I think Vision would have had a lot of uh, problems with it. But even after we got out, um, at least for me, I was, and, and, and I think Conrad too, were so concerned to show the gravity of the thing. I sat in the car and I dictated it because I was not sure that I would drive from Kankazana to, to 7th Street eh? and not be intercepted and lose it. Eh? So, 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 so that was the magnum done. And of course, I mean, you know, we are business people. After I called, I think Conrad also called to negotiate, you know, to say they should clear the front page. I called our commercial people eh, and said we should double the print run. But for us, 
And, you know, I could really see the meaning of what basically had done because um, we were the principal independent paper at that point. And so we had to tell the story. But then also we were seen as an opposition paper. And, you know, at that time the word multi-party was a dirty word. So they used to insult us, you know, they would say you are multi-parties. Multi-parties used to be an insult. So it was clear that what Besigye had done, that he had taken this monkey off our back. That finally, eh, someone had picked this fight and now we could actually more properly be an independent newspaper, which was not necessarily viewed as opposition because you know, that monkey now was Besigye's. So in that sense, really, you know, he, he helped us to kind of uh, pivot to um, what you could call a more credible, independent posture. Charles, if, if I could ask you, the three times that he has run for the presidency, four times, in fact, um, yeah. and, and the monitor has, has always been there almost for him in, in terms of demanding that he be released if he's arrested, demanding that he's, he's, he's given the time and space to campaign for his ideas. How much influence do you think his candidature in, in the presidency has had on the media? It's, I think it is a lot, you know, because one of the things is that the, the way um, the Besige's politics has come to define the way the media understands opposition. So that you could see that when it's, it's, it's uh, if, if one talks of the architecture of opposition politics, they think of it, you don't think of the DP or UPC, which, which is very important, you know, you know because he is, uh, he is militant, um, you know, in ways in which uh, DP and the Conservative Party and the UPC are not. And then he has, uh, it's, you know, the, 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 um, the notion of the opposition politics as splinter politics. By, because if you look generally now, um, you know, in terms of framing, in terms of the, uh, um, yeah, you know, the narrative architecture. It, Ugandan politics is very, very much around splinters. And uh, I think that that is one of uh, the basic legacies. Also, the, the other thing about the Besige presidency or the candidature of Besige, when you heard that he was not going to run for the presidency again, what, what thoughts went through your mind? Um, actually, I thought, uh, I thought it was about time. I just, I just think that he's, uh, I, I kind of half expected that uh, he would, because one of the things is that, um, the way I think that basically my, the way I've understood him, he always has a two track approach. There is the one which is more legalistic and constitutional. He's the candidate. He challenges, uh, uh, you know, Museveni. But there is a part of me that thinks that that is never really been all. I think that Besige has always understood that the way Museveni responds to him is, is, is you know. It, he has not, uh, let me reframe that. He has not so much, he has not only been seeking to, to replace Museveni as, a, as president. He has been seeking to force Museveni to respond in certain ways. And the way Museveni has responded to Vesigi has delegitimized him. Um, so, you know, uh, Museveni was a much more pragmatic and centrist politician by 1996. Um, he he no longer is. He was uh, he was even a much more magnanimous, eh? but basically forced him in the trenches and almost forced him to be a kind of uh, a 
parochial uh, leader who is associated with violence. Eh? Not the kind of high-minded Museveni who was the author of the problem, what is the problem with Africa and those kind of things. So I think that um, that part of this year, that, that has been definition of trying to force um, you know, um, seven to define him in a certain way is what we are seeing now because by, by him going out, I think he put Museven in a spot and actually makes his presidency for life project look even much more fragile and unjustified. Mm. Well, Charles, if, if you could advise the media for how to handle the forthcoming election, where you have one of the biggest players of the election not taking part in the election, how should the media approach this election story? You know, it's, it's, it is going to be tricky, but, uh, but I'll tell you something that, uh, you know, the Monitor did su very successfully in 1996, that even some of our critics like Museven acknowledged that we had done a good job. We basically, we decided that a lot of the elections would be covered as a backstory. So we had the two horse races, but then we also then did, uh, you know, the backstory. I remember we even had something like, you know, we call this snakes and ladders. We actually did the snakes and ladders board, which would publish and show how various pieces and uh, and you know issues had moved, who had gone where what were some of the, uh, you know, what were some of the background stories. I think that if they kind, you know, if they did that, they'll be able to capture this very unusual situation that uh, basically not running has created. So, uh, you, know, um, you know, beyond that, really, I think that they'll just have to fly by the seat of their pants. But if, if I was covering the media, this would be the time to have a backstory approach. And Charles, very finally, what legacy does, does Besige leave behind for, for the media specifically and those that have covered him for the years? Um, you know, the, the, the Besige was, he's, he's been a brave man. Eh? He's, he's, a, he's really been a brave man. And, uh, but in a, he also allowed us to look at, I mean, if you forget him and Museveni, uh, you know, and they are very uh, unique and a peculiar dynamic. They, he, he, uh, I mean, it also allowed us to look in at a very different way at Uganda, uh, you, know, um, you know, this, the Ugandan polity, because it was, uh, and, 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 you know, many people might be surprised, uh, you know, this, but I think it, uh, it showed uh, incredible national endurance because um, both the uh, where he took Uganda as a country, the place where he for forced his politics to go, and the fact that we survived, eh? and probably, probably even came out of a country of it. I think that that, that that has, to me, it was just beautiful to see. And uh, because, you know, before, uh, you know, before basically, it's not that the other people were lightweight. Eh? No, I think they were very strong, but um, they, uh, no one pushed the envelope the way he did. And, uh, and uh, not every country would have survived it. Not every political and social system would have survived it but our pol political system, and, uh, but most importantly, the underlying uh, culture and social dynamics of the country held it together. So that's, that's beautiful. All right. Thank